Hello there, and welcome back. In the previous episode, we added Firebase into our app, so now we can read and write data into the database. And we also saw that everything is working by writing this user class into the database and then reading the data. So in this episode, we're going to send the location from the device into the database. So this way we can have a connection between all the devices that our app is installed on and then we are going to be able to read the data from the database and display the location on the map. Okay, so to do that we will go to the location service and over here we're going to create an instance of the Firebase Manager that we created in the previous episode. And then inside the onCreate, we're going to initialize it, Firebase Manager, Firebase Manager. Now, if we scroll down here into this part that we have the callback, we're going to place all of this code inside this part. So after we get this callback, it means that it got the location, we're going to receive this location and store it inside this variable. And then we're going to check if the location is not null, then we're going to store it again inside a variable called current location. And for now it will simply be a string that we're going to save, okay? It's going to be the location latitude and then location longitude, okay? So all of this is going to be saved inside this variable. And now we want to do two things. First of all, if it's the first time that we get the location for this device, we want to create a new user, right? Because we have this user class over here. Maybe we're going to change the name to device and not user, but it's the same idea. So the first time we get the location, we need to create a new device inside the database. And if it's not the first time we're getting the location, we just want to update the location, right? So to do that, we're going to set some kind of Boolean to check if it's the first time we're getting the location. And then we can know if we need to create a new device inside the database or simply update the location, okay? So we need to check if we want to run this method, the write new user method, or this update method, okay? So we're going to do all of that over here, and this boolean will be saved inside the share preferences. So it's going to be saved locally on our device, and after we get the location for the first time, we are going to simply set it to be false, and then the next time we are going to know that it's not the first time we're getting the location, so we don't need to create a new user, and it means that we simply need to update the location. So if, and then else, so if is first time sending data, and this will be an extension that we're going to create. If it's the first time we're sending the data, set first time sending data, and we're going to set this Boolean to become false, right? Because after we get it for the first time, we want to set it to be false. And then the next time it will no longer be true, it will be false, so it's going to skip to this part, okay? And then over here, we're simply going to create a new user. Let's call it new device, okay? So it's going to be a user. Later, we're going to change this uh, class name. So it's going to be a new user. Inside, we're going to have the user name. And we're going to have the location, right? And let's import this user object. So over here we can see that we have a user name and a location. The user ID is getting created 
automatically, okay? So we don't need to touch it. So we have the username, we have the location. So the username for now will simply be the model of this phone, okay? So the way we can get the model of the phone is by typing Android OS build model, okay? And the location will be our current location. So for now, it's going to be a string, okay? So if it's the first time we're sending the data, we're going to create a new device. And let's just rename this class right now, okay? Let's go over here and rename this user. Refactor, rename, let's call this device, okay? So now it's going to be called device and this will be called device. So we're creating a new device and we're setting the name of this device to be the model of this device. And we're getting this current location that we got over here, okay? So we're setting it inside this new device variable. And then we're simply going to reference the Firebase manager, write new user, right? And we simply pass in this new device. So we can also change this method name, write new user, let's rename it to write new device or add new device, okay? So add new device and we're adding this new device because it's the first time we're sending this data to the database. Else means that not the first time sending the data, we're going to reference the Firebase Manager and we're going to update the data. And for now, we're simply going to property to update will be the username and new value will be, for now we're going to set the time to be the new value because if I'm going to set the location to be updated, we're not going to be able to test it because I'm sitting at my PC while recording this, so the location will not change. But we do want to see if this update data is working, okay? So instead of sending the location over here, that will not change obviously because I'm not going anywhere, we're going to get the current time, okay? Just for testing purposes. Calendar, get instance, get time, okay? So we're simply going to get the time and we're going to update the username with this time. So current time, time to string. And you're going to see how it works. Now, we still need to pass the user ID, right? Over here, we need to pass the user ID. Otherwise, it will not know which user to update. We need to pass this user ID so it will know what user to update, right? So to do that, over here, when we first create this device, we're also going to set current user ID. Okay, and this is also going to be an extension. So we're going to save in our shared preferences the user ID of this device because we don't want to get a different user ID each time we create a new device, right? We're only going to do this once on each device. So when we get the user ID for the first time, we're simply going to save it inside shared pref and then we can always fetch it and use it to update the user, okay? You understand what is going on? So when we create this new device for the first time, we're simply going to get the new device and we're going to get its user ID. Because when we created it over here, it automatically created this user ID. So here we simply get this user ID and we're going to save it inside 
our shared preferences locally, okay, on our device. And then over here, we can simply use and get the current user ID from the shared preference, okay? So over here, we're going to set the current user ID and save it. Let's say it's going to be a, B, C, one, two, three. So it's going to be the user ID for this device. And then when we want to update this device, we also need to provide it with its user ID. So we're going to get it from the shared preference. Okay, and we're going to create all of these extensions in a moment. So I hope you understand what is going on over here. Let's just add a few comments so it will be clearer. Creating, writing, new device, database, creating new device, saving user ID in shared pref, okay? So it's always a good thing to add comments. So later you're going to know what all of these things do, if you forget. Now over here for testing, we're simply going to get the current time and we're going to update the username with the time. It doesn't make any sense, but it's just for testing. So we know that this update data actually updates the value every few seconds. Well, every callback. So for the first time, it's going to create this new device. It will get the user ID and it will save this device in the database. The next callback, this will no longer be true. It will be false. So it's going to skip all of this and it's going to simply update the username to become the time, right? So that's the logic that is going on over here. Now to create all of these extensions, we're simply going to go back into our utils and shared pref helper, and we're going to add all of these extensions. So I'm going to do that now quickly, and I'm going to explain to you after I'm done. Okay, so I'm done with these extensions and let me explain to you what they do. So first of all, we create just the names of these extensions of the booleans inside our shared pref, like we did with the location service status. So we created a user ID boolean and we created, well, actually a user ID string and a first time sending data boolean. Okay, so with this, we can get and put the information inside the shared pref and it will know what are we referring to. So first of all, we have both of these set current user ID and get current user ID. So if we want to set the current user ID, we simply pass in the user ID. Then we have this instance of the shared pref and we simply put a string inside this user ID variable and it's going to be with the value of this user ID. And we're going to apply. So this will add this user ID into the shared pref. Here, we simply get the string, okay? We return a string. So again, we have this instance of the shared pref, and we simply get a string of this user ID, and this is the default value, but it's going to get the user ID because we put it over here, and if it's not going to find anything, it will simply return this, okay? And we have both of these. So here we check if it's the first time we send the data. So it's a Boolean. We simply add this Boolean over here inside this variable. And if it's false, it's going to be false. If it's true, it's going to be true. And this is just the default value that we have to provide, okay? 
and over here we set the first time sending data, okay? So we edit and put the boolean into the same variable and it's going to be this is first time, okay? And we apply. So this is just a way to set the current user ID into the shared pref and this is a way to get the user ID from the shared pref. This is a way to set the first time sending data boolean and this is a way to check or to get the first time sending data boolean, okay? So this is what we do here. And it's similar to what we did before. We checked the status of the server and then we changed the status of the server, okay? So we put the boolean and we got the boolean. So this is what is going on over here and we can also change this to apply. I guess it's something new. So now if we go back into the location service, all of these things will be created and we can import them. So now again, let's go over this code. If it's the first time we send the data and in the beginning, before we change it, it's going to be true, right? Because if we go over here, we can see that the default value is true. So in the beginning, it will be true. So it will go over here and it will change it to false, but it will still run this block and then it will create a new device. It will get the model of this device and it will get the current location. Then it's going to also set and save the user ID that was created. Let's also rename it to device ID maybe. Let's go over here. Refactor device ID, okay? And then it's going to save this device ID into the shared pref. And then we're simply going to add this entire device into the database. Then the next callback, we get the location. This will no longer be true. It's going to be false. So it's going to skip all of this code and it's going to go over here. And then it's simply going to update the data, okay? So it's going to go to this user with the same user ID or device ID. And it's going to update the username with the time, okay? So we can change a few things. For example, this, instead of get current user ID, we can change it to get current device ID and we can also go over here. We can also change this. Get current, set current device ID. And also here. Device ID. So it will be a bit clearer, okay? So this is what happens over here. And of course, this is temporary that we update the username with the time. This is just to check that this method works. Later, we're going to actually update the location property with the current location, okay? And now we can check if this actually works, okay? So we're going to run the app and we're also going to look at our database at the same time. And we're going to see if it actually first creates this new device. And then the second time, we're going to see if it simply updates the time. Uh, to make it easier, we can go into our Firebase manager and over here, we can add some print lines. Data was updated, failed to update data, okay? So now let's open, let's run the app. Okay, so now we need to grant the permission before it starts to run the service. We have our database opened over here and for now it's empty. So we're going to accept these device location permissions. And we have this new 
callback new user added. And we can see over here that it created this new device and we got the model. And in a few seconds, it's going to do the update method. And we're going to see that the username is going to be changed into the time because that's what we decided to do. So let's wait a few seconds. Okay, so as I told you in the previous episode, working with location from the emulator can cause different problems. So if I was to connect my physical device, it would definitely work, but our emulator is causing us problems. So the way we're going to deal with that is simply stop our app. We're going to go here to device manager and we're going to wipe the data. Well, we need to close this emulator first wipe the data. Okay, so now it cleared the data and we can also do cold boot. So it's just to refresh the emulator. I just don't want to connect my physical device right now. I need to find the cable and I don't have energy for that. So let's wait a few seconds. Then we can probably delete this because it will anyway reinstall the app and it's going to think that it never created this new device. So it's just a problem because of the emulator. Let's wait a few seconds. And we don't have any app installed. So now we can run it again. And let's hope that this time it's going to work. We're going to accept the permissions. Okay, so it took a few seconds, but it created this new user. So we have this new device over here. And if it's going to work, then we're going to get another callback. And this time it's simply going to update the data. So this username will become the time, the current time, okay? Okay, so now you see data was updated and our username was changed and updated to become the time. This is just the Unix time format, right? So we see that it works. It's a bit problematic with emulators and locations. So don't think that something is not working with the code. If I was to simply plug in my physical device, everything would work. And you can see it keeps sending this location callback, but now it will always update the location will update the user and it will not create a new user. So if you see, it will always update this time and it's going to change the time. You see, it changed the time. So next we simply need to update the location over here and not the time. But as I told you, because I'm sitting in one spot, my location will not change. So we cannot test this, but what we're going to do is to update the location eventually because the device that this app is going to be installed on will move at some point, right? This is the whole point of this app to track the location of the device. So we're going to update the location. And of course, we're not going to save it as a string. We're going to save it as some kind of object because then we need to extract this location and show it on the map. So that's what we're going to do in the next episode. Okay, this episode is shorter just because we wanted to do this one thing to send the location into the database. And in the next episode, we're going to get the location and display it on our map. Okay, so thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you're still not subscribed. Please leave a like, it will help me a lot. And I'll see you next time.